Inside this box is something special. In fact, this might be one of the greatest innovations we've seen in the 3D printing industry in recent years. This is the Beacon Surface Scanner. And trust me when I tell you that this isn't just your average bed probe. If you've been 3D printing for any length of time, you'll no doubt appreciate the importance of getting a good first layer. The first layer can mean the difference between a successful print and a failed print. To achieve a good first layer, we need to maintain a consistent gap between the nozzle and the bed. This requires that the plane of the nozzle be parallel to the plane of the bed. Imagine for a moment that our bed is flat. The gantry is square and the gantry plane is perfectly parallel to the bed plane. We then only need to ensure the gap between the nozzle and the bed is adequate and we'd have a perfect first layer every time. In reality, most 3D printer beds are far from flat and oftentimes our gantry is out of square out of level, or both. This is where bed probes come in. Bed probes serve two primary functions, bed topology characterization and gantry leveling. In essence, the bed probe is like an automated digital caliper. It simply measures the distance between two points and reports that information back to the firmware. It's what the firmware does with the measurements that makes bed probe so powerful. The collection of the data can be achieved with a variety of different sensors, each with their own mechanisms and characteristics. The two most popular are the inductive probe and the BL touch. Inductive probes emit an electromagnetic field that is disrupted when in close proximity to a metallic surface. The BL touch, on the other hand, uses a physical pin to probe the bed. When the probe contacts the surface, it moves upwards, as does a small magnet inside the body of the sensor. This magnet triggers a Hall effect sensor, which measures changes in the strength of a magnetic field. So while it may not be as obvious, the BL touch also relies on the principle of electromagnetism. There's a theme starting to emerge here, and the sensor that is the topic of this video is right on trend. The Beacon Surface Scanner uses a high strength magnetic field to induce eddy currents in a conductive target. Using a conversion factor, the strength of the eddy currents can be correlated to the distance of the sensor from the surface. If you're rusty on your electromagnetic theory, you can think of an eddy current like a ripple in water. The magnetic field emitted by the beacon sensor disturbs the surface of the water and creates a ripple. Except, instead of water molecules, we have electrons flowing through the surface of a conductive medium. So what makes the beacon unique, besides using a different technique to collect distance measurements? Well, the use of this technique makes beacon incredibly efficient at data collection. Instead of probing, it scans the bed, collecting 100 data points for every one data point collected by the other guys. So not only is it faster, it also creates an incredibly high resolution mesh. This is useful for first layer compensation, but it's also just kind of cool to look at. It really feels like you're looking through a microscope. Beacon is available in three different configurations, normal, low profile, and right angle. You'll need to pick the one that will best fit your printhead. Currently, with this device being so new, there aren't that many mount designs out there yet. So if you're buying this today, you may need to design your own. At this point, it became apparent to me that one of the biggest limitations of the Beacon is your ability to mount it in a suitable location. It takes up quite a bit of room in comparison to a slender probe. It needs to lie flat and in close proximity to the nozzle. As well, you need to ensure that there are no metallic parts within the so-called exclusion zone, as this will mess with the sensor. So after some tinkering, I managed to cobble together something I thought would work. The next step was to print it out and mount the sensor. The beacon kit comes with the sensor itself high quality braided USB cable, and a small bag of mounting hardware. I first installed the sensor on the mount, then fastened the mount to my printhead. The next step was to plug in the USB cable and zip tie it to the umbilical cord type cable sheath that runs from the printhead back to the motherboard. Then it was on to the firmware configuration. Currently, Beacon is only compatible with Clipper firmware. The steps for configuration are pretty straightforward and are well documented on the Beacon website. The beacon replaces your other probe entirely, functioning also as the Z end stop. If you're switching from another sensor, make sure to delete any reference to it in the auto-generated config section, 
otherwise you'll get an error at runtime. The next step is to run a calibration procedure, which involves a paper test to set the nozzle height, followed by a short period of data collection, during which the beacon determines its calibration variables. At this point, I thought I'd be ready for the first test. However, as it turned out, I also needed to make some adjustments to my probe points for gantry leveling and my axis limits for mesh generation. Otherwise, the beacon would be off the surface of the printer, causing the print head to crash when it went to probe. With my mount design, I also have an issue where the beacon hits the rear Z lead screw. The default RAD OS behavior for homing is to center the X axis before homing Y, causing the sensor to crash directly into the lead screw. In order to circumvent this, I changed the Z safe homing position. With those changes made, I was able to start collecting data. I experimented with different combinations of probe points and data collection speeds and watched in amazement as the printer raced through the leveling procedure. The meshes that were generated were amazingly detailed. Unfortunately for me, this procedure made me realize just how poorly squared the frame of this printer is. At this point, I also started to notice some spikes in the mesh. I speculated that this may be because I was running at high speeds during data collection and my mount isn't very rigid. I enabled input shaping and ran the test again, and the amplitude of the spikes seemed to decrease, although they didn't go away entirely. At this point, I also discovered that the mount protruded past the bottom of my nozzle, making it impossible to actually print with this setup. I'll need to go back to the drawing board and see if I can come up with a better design. So there you have it, the Beacon Surface Scanner. This really is a cool piece of tech. We've come a long way since the days of springs and leveling knobs. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to support the channel and the production of these videos, consider joining me on Patreon, where I post exclusive content and a catalog of high quality 3D printable models. I'm Taylor, this is YGK3D. Until next time, happy 3D printing.